thank you for joining us again. I'm so excited you're here with us. If you have not watched the last episodes, please go back there on every source of social media you can find and you just put our name in there and you'll find us. Amen. But today we're talking about uh, welcome Holy Spirit, which is a great, great subject. Yeah, you know, as we've discovered, you know, the Holy Spirit and his person and the place that he wants to have in a believer's life, it's not enough to know who he is. You need to allow him to come in yes. and create a place where, where he can dwell, you know. And, and, and so it's up to us, amen, to open up our hearts, amen, and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and, and dwell within us, you know, to create an environment within ourselves that he's comfortable moving in because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He brings peace and joy and, and everything that's good every time you come into contact with him. And, you know, I think one of the things that's amazing is that in early translations uh, of the Bible, mm -hmm. one of the terms that was given him was he used to be called the Holy Guest. Oh, wow. You know, because he's he's someone that that's supposed to be with us. Jesus, when he was leaving the earth, he said, I'm going away. He said, but I'm sending another. He goes, I'm mm -hmm. sending a comforter. You know, I'm sending the Holy Spirit. And we've been so blessed, amen, as believers to be in a church that, practiced, mm -hmm. amen, and taught on the person of the Holy Spirit. Because we're living in a day and an age where there's a lot of Pentecostal churches that aren't even Pentecostal no more. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's scary because this is a major experience when you welcome the Holy Spirit into your life and you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Man, there's an empowerment that yes. comes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it's an experience that surpasses anything you've ever experienced before, uh, second to salvation, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But I believe that people need to understand that the more you welcome and create an environment within your heart and within your life for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell with you, mm -hmm. and the better life gets. Not just for you, but also we've seen the effects of allowing the Holy Spirit to be welcome into our lives. Mm -hmm. We've seen how it's affected our family. Yes. And you know, it's never, I don't really think that you're ever too young to welcome the Holy Spirit. I feel like he's there no matter how old you are. You know, we've seen it with our own kids to where they'll say something at such a young age and, and you know the Holy Ghost is the one that revealed that yeah. to them, you know, or or they'll they'll do something or not do something. It's because it's the leading of the Holy Ghost. And they'll say something profound at three or four years old and you're like, they might not understand yeah. that was the Holy Spirit, but we know that was the Holy Spirit, you know. And he, he doesn't care how old you are. He's there for you. He He wants to be there for you at every time, at all times. Not just when you're at church, you know, and, and that's I yeah, think a absolutely. big misconception. I think that people think the Holy Spirit is when you're for when you're praying, when you're reading your Bible or when you're at church or you're talking to somebody about God. But you should be engaging the Holy Spirit when you're driving to work. You should be talking to the Holy Spirit at all times. You know, I, I get in the car and uh, I put I have a certain set of songs that I put on just 54 of them, you know, <laughs> times four minutes, uh, you know, wherever I'm going. They, they, those songs get me there, you know, and every song, uh, you know, I'm, I'm engaging, I'm praying, I'm, I'm, uh, praying, I'm worshiping, you know, and I feel the Holy Spirit with me, you know, when, uh, I'm going down a road and, um, the Holy Spirit says, don't turn there. I feel the Holy Spirit nudging me because I've allowed him to come into the car with me. I've allowed him to go to work with me. I've allowed him to go to the store with me. I've allowed him to show me where the best parking spot is, where the best Amen. deal is, Amen. where uh, where I can get the the discount. Where you walk into a store and they say they don't give discounts in that store. They they don't drop the prices in that store. And guess what? The Holy Spirit led me there at the right time and talked to the right person. And for me, they gave me a discount. For me, they dropped the price. You know what? He he's there for every area of your life. And yeah, he loves us so much. And you know, and the thing is, this is as we begin to serve the Lord, as we become child of, uh, you know, children of God, mm -hmm. you know, the Holy Spirit, He's the one that takes us by the hand. He's that reliable, trustworthy guide mm -hmm. that will help you, you know, place your life where the footsteps of the Lord wants you to be. And what I love about the Holy Spirit is that He's the one that's guiding us, not just some man. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're not bound to people; we're bound to God. Mm -hmm. We're bound to Him, and I think that when you come to a place where you have truly welcomed the Holy Spirit into your life, you, you surrender to him the same way that you've surrendered to Jesus, the same way that you've surrendered to God the Father. And when you come to the place where you surrender to the Holy Spirit, where you've welcomed him in, you'll come into a position to where you realize that he's the one that's possessing you, mm -hmm. that he's the one, amen, that, that, that's living within you. 
and your attitude will change. Mm -hmm. You'll offer yourself to God. You'll let him know that I'm yours to command. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, I'm here to receive orders and instructions. You know, what is the work that you want to do in my life and through my life today? Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, as we draw closer to him and we allow him and his mm -hmm. presence to take over, and life just gets easier. It does. It does. At all, like I said earlier, you know, at all times, and, and what you said right now is when we we allow him to command us or we ask him, it, it life gets easier. But I think a lot of times we forget. We forget to ask him. We forget yeah, to we to say to him, hey, um, you know, wh where do I go today? What do I do today? We forget to do those things. And if we for we're forgetting those simple things, you know, we may end up in a situation or be in a place where we we weren't supposed to be just because we didn't listen to the Holy Ghost, you know. Um, you know, I remember a time when uh, we went to Disneyland with our kids. Oh, I love, love Disneyland. <laughs> but we went to Disneyland with our kids, and we were young and um, had our young kids with us. And we're teaching our kids how to listen to the Holy Ghost. We're teaching our kids to, you know, we're raising our kids in the Lord. All three of our kids are saved. They're, you know, I think the youngest one was maybe three years old. So there were three, four, and I believe six or seven. And we decided that we were going to get them on Magic Mountain. I mean, yeah. uh, not Magic Mountain, uh, the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. And um, I know I'm walking into something fake. I know that everything was there purchased. It's not something real, you know. So we tell our kids, um, no, you're getting on. My oldest one was happy. She loved getting on that ride. And my two youngest ones were crying and crying. And I said to you, should we not take them on here, you know, until they're older? And then, no, nah, let's take them on. Well, we didn't pray, you know, should we really expose them to this, you know. <laughs> we didn't pray. So we, we were, I said, no, no, you're fine. You know, you better re rebuke the spirit of fear, you know, and, and we're getting on this. And so we get on this ride, and the first, it just closes in, you know. And at that moment that it's closing in, I hear the Holy Ghost not a good idea <laughs> all of a sudden my son clamps onto my leg starts freaking out our our youngest daughter grabs onto you and starts bawling she buried her face into my chest where she couldn't see nothing <laughs> she was bawling and i look at you and you looked at me what did we just do my oldest one's like what's their problem <laughs> you know and so we get on this ride where we're already in it. There's no way to get out. Yeah. We're already in it. We're like, okay, we'll talk to them about rebuke and fear later, you know? So we get on this ride. And so I turn around and my son, Josh, is right there. And he's quiet. And so I thought, see, it worked. He, he's, he's done. And do you remember the old song, Welcome Holy Spirit? You remember that song? I don't know if you remember that song, Welcome Holy Spirit. So I turn around and I go to tell my son, see, it's fun. And he's sitting there and he's singing, Welcome Holy Spirit. <laughs> he's singing and he's praying and he's singing, Welcome Holy Spirit. He's got his eyes shut. He's got his little hands raised. And I'm sitting there just crying, thinking, oh, my goodness, what did I do? And so I'm going, I wonder if, if Madeline far, fared better. <laughs> you know, Josh fared be better with Madeline. We get off the ride. Josh, he's praying in the Holy Ghost, and he's all, you know, geared up in the Holy Ghost already. So he's doing better, you know. And I get off. I'm like, oh, maybe Madeline liked it better. So I said, Madeline. And I turn around and look. She's all, Daddy, Jesus was with me my whole time. He was in my heart. And I said, God, we made our kids get on this ride. They had to pray through. But afterwards, you know, now we laugh about it, and it's hilarious. But, you know, they knew at four and three years old. Yeah. To welcome the Holy Spirit, to call on his name, and that he would comfort them. He would love them, and he would protect them from those rides at Disneyland, you know? Yeah, man. And, and you know what it comes down to is that, you know, they understood, even at that small age, that the presence of the Lord in your life yes. is going to determine the level of success or failure yes. that you experience. And, and they've been raised with the Lord being a guest in the house and mm -hmm. everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's awesome, you know, that that foundation was laid mm -hmm. and that he was brought close to them because every one of our children are serving in ministry. Mm -hmm. Every one of them have been walking with God every day of their life. They've never known a day without him. And that's because we allowed the Holy Spirit to come front and center. Mm -hmm. His presence has always been welcomed in our lives, in our homes, in everything that yes. we do. To where I think sometimes 
you have people that they think that when they go to church and they're in a service that it's like going to a petting zoo. That you go there, you know, to be, you know, with the Lord. You know, you go there to be with Jesus. Wow. You go to be with God the Father. And you realize that he says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I remember you and me. When we got born again, a month later we got filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember that we were so hungry to know more about him. And I remember, I believe it was my mother, gave us a, a book by Benny Hinn, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that book changed our lives mm -hmm. because it really brought forward who the person of the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. and, and what he can do in a person's life if they will welcome it. It didn't matter where you're at or what kind of mm -hmm. strengths or failures you had. It makes me want to cry because I remember at the time that, that we were given that book, that I, I was, I knew I was born again. I knew I was saved, but man, I felt like such a failure mm -hmm. in so many other areas. We were still dealing with the the repercussions of a life that was lived without God. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit, that book showed me that God can use anybody. Yeah. That God wants to be with anybody, and uh, it just brought great change, you know. And, and with that, you know, brought great conviction. I wanted to be a better man. Yes. You know, I wanted to make better decisions, and and the Holy Spirit. He leads us in that, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He he really does. I remember one one part of the book. It says to say, um, "Good morning, Holy Spirit." You know, it, it's the title of the book. But since that day, you know, we've been saved twenty six years, and we got the book a little bit after that. Yeah. And every morning, even to this day, when I wake up, I'll either say, "Good morning, Holy Spirit," or "Hello, how are you today?" You know. I, I mean, I'm sure he, he's not suffering the flu or anything, you know, so maybe somebody may think, well, why would you say, ask the Holy Spirit, how are you? Or why would you talk to the Holy Spirit? He's not somebody that you could see. You know what? It matters to him. You know, it, it matters that I thought about him the first time I woke up, you know, yeah. and so I still do that. And, you know, if 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 for some reason I don't, I feel that I'm like, he's like, excuse me, excuse me, I'm waiting, yeah. you know, and uh it, it, he's so personable. He he's that's it. Yeah, he's personable. He he loves me the way I am. He he's there for me no matter what. Uh, he he wants to guide me. He wants to lead me. And all I have to do is welcome him. All I have to do is allow him. All I have to do is is show him that no matter what he asks me to do, I'm there and I will do it. You know, and, and he has all the answers. Yes, he does. You know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit that he'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Yes, he does. And I use that everywhere I go. From the moment that I started discovering who he was and, and him being with us and in our lives, he's the one that's helped us to grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's helped mold our convictions, our morals, and our values now. He's the one that's brought us through the best of times. He's the one that's brought us through the worst of times. And, you know, he's the one that gives us, you know, that divine direction. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're we're heading in the way that God wants us to go. We're not going in a way that seems right. We're going in the way that is right. Mm -hmm. And he gives us instruction along the way. And I know there's been times where on when I was working a secular job where situations would arise and I didn't have the answer, mm -hmm. but I knew he knows all truth, not yeah. just the truth that's found in the word. He knows all truth, yeah. all truth. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was working for this truck, truck manufacturing plant and there was a, we would, I was working the service department, basically any, box trucks that had been rolled or hit trees, it was my responsibility to repair them. And I had this one vehicle that had been just destroyed. And it, we probably put about $35,000 worth of work into this truck, had to put new walls on it, new roof. But when we were putting the tailgate and the rear frame on this truck, it wasn't square. It was all crooked. And I didn't know what to do. I remember my boss came out. I knew more than him. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> um, his boss came out. The plant manager came out. The engineers came out. And they're there just scratching their heads, and nobody knows what to do. And I'm like, this is a $35,000 mistake on my watch. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, the foreman here. And I just prayed in the Holy Spirit. And I said, Holy Spirit, I don't know the answer. But I said, I know you do. And as I prayed, I heard the Holy Spirit say, drop the extension plate on the lift gate," which in the natural, it's like, what would that do? Mm -hmm. That'd be like saying, oh, the, the front door won't shut. Just move the placemat to the left. Is, what does that have to do with the front door? And so the Lord told me, he said, drop the extension plate on the lift gate. So while all these, these people are there, plant manager, engineers, I said, 
dropped the extension plate on that lift gate. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. Mm -hmm. And I said, just drop the extension plate on the lift gate. And they dropped the extension plate, and that whole truck just squared right up. Mm -hmm. And I remember they all looked at me. Now I have their attention. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they want to know is, how did you know to do that? And I told them, I said, I didn't. I said, the Holy Ghost knew. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not that good. Yeah. And, you know, and I was able to bring God glory through it. Yeah. But I was able to tap in to the power of the Holy Spirit because he was welcomed to go to my job with me, and, and not you, just to yeah. church with me. You're right. You're right. You know, and don't you love it when the Holy Ghost shows out like that? It's like he, he's there. He that always he makes just, you look good, too. Yes, he does. You know, all we have to do is ask him. All we have to do is welcome him. All we have to do is just um, receive him. Yeah. You know, and he will. You know, um, Go with me really. Why don't you read Second Corinthians really quick? Oh, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse seventeen. It says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's liberty. Amen. It's the same thing, you know, like when Jesus, you think about in Acts chapter four, mm -hmm. verse uh, eighteen and nineteen, when Jesus came out of the wilderness, you know, the first thing that he said when he went to church was he read the scroll where it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm -hmm. He's anointed me. Amen. To what? To bring liberty. Yes. That's what happens when the Spirit comes. You know, I remember um, the scripture, um, John eight thirty six. It says that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. I love that. It's just, it's just been an anchor to my soul since I've been saved. But to know that that liberty comes from, you know, from God. But it also, the Holy Spirit's one that constantly reminds me of that. I remember at a time when um, I first got saved and I was dealing with not under, not knowing that I was really saved. I remember the Holy Spirit was the one reminded me constantly of that scripture. The Holy Spirit was the one taking me back to that scripture and 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 anchoring me in that, you know, scripture and just reminding me, you know, you've been forgiven. You're you're you've welcomed me into your life. You've received me into your life and you're forgiven. And he just drew me and, and it was a gentle drawing. It was a at times I felt like he was dragging me, you know. <laughs> at times I felt like he was pushing me, but it was always allowed, whether I needed a push from him, I needed a drag from him. Sometimes I felt like the Holy Ghost kicked me in the butt. You know, whatever whatever he needed to do, I, I, I allowed him to do. And, and that's because he was your guest. Yes. yes. And, and I think it really just comes down to when you allow him to have a place in your life to where he's a guest, he's a resident in your heart, you're going to find yourself in a place to where you'll never be bound again. Amen. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means you're going to be in a place where there's power to overcome. Amen. You're going to be in a position where there's power for you to live right. There's power for you to see miracles, signs, and wonders work in your life to where there's power for miracles. Amen. That's one of the things that I've enjoyed is that knowing that whatever life has thrown our way, good or bad, the Holy Spirit has been with us and he's guided us through situations that we're so beyond oh, our yeah. wisdom, so beyond our understanding. And he always guided us through the storms of life. He's guided us through minefields of things that Satan laid down to try to destroy us. And he always brought us to a safe place. Yes, he did. Because we allowed him to be our guest, to be yeah. our guide. Man, and you know, I don't know, um, if you've allowed the Holy Spirit to be part of every area of your life, your work, your your uh, friendships, your uh even church, you know, what, whatever area of your life, you know, ha if you haven't allowed him in every area, let him know that he's welcome in your home. Let him know he's welcome in your car. Let him know he's welcome in, in your church and with your friends, wherever you may be. When you allow him to be your holy guest, oh, I'm telling you, your life will change. You'll, you'll see things clearer. You'll, you'll do things, things with the better intentions because they're going to be things that he's guided you in. And so just pray and ask him to lead you in every area. And you will find yourself just dialed in exactly to what he wants you to do. God bless you. And I hope you come back and watch us next week. We love Amen. you very much.